Okay, welcome to One Big Question on the Modern Software Engineering channel. Today, Dave and I are going to be talking about whether or not AI is going to change DevOps forever. I guess, Dave, what are your thoughts? Is that, is DevOps going to change, be changed forever? As usual, when we do this, Sam, I'm going to start with the answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it's not going to change DevOps forever. It certainly might give us some interesting tools that add to it but I don't think it changes fundamentally what it is to take a DevOps style approach. Maybe start with defining what DevOps means to you then, because that might help people kind of understand where you're coming from. That's a good take. And, uh, and I've got a provocative way of defining DevOps is that I think DevOps is part of continuous delivery. I think continuous delivery is the bigger idea. So if you think of continuous delivery, not in terms of build automation or releasing frequently, which is what lots of people think, but you think of it in terms of the, the original terms of the statement, our job as software developers is to aim to be able to continuously deliver value into the hands of our users. So what would it take to achieve that? One of many things that it would take to achieve that is a much closer, more effective relationship between the people involved in creating the software and the people involved in managing it once it's in production, so development and ops. So that's certainly one part of it. DevOps has grown to be bigger than that, and there are many wonderful ideas. I'm not trying to start one of these wars you know, between people on the same side. I don't really mind whether you call it DevOps, or I, I mind a little bit, but I don't mind a lot whether we call it DevOps or continuous delivery. I think continuous delivery is the broader idea. I think that what that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve the continuous delivery of valuable software into the hands of our users, and we optimize everything to try and achieve that. One of the huge stumbling blocks classically was friction between developers and operations who were incentivized really on different things. Developers were, were classically incentivized to go feature, 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 and operations were classically incentivized to say, there's no change. We don't want anything to change because you'll break it all. And so we have to bridge that gap and we have to, we have to improve on those things. What's your take on this? What, how would you, what would you? What? I think, I think picking up from your definition, like I know Pat Devoir sort of later on, because when we started talking about things like DevSecOps, he said really DevOps is about removing friction in the delivery process, right? So although the focus was that Dev and Ops, there were other, there's other friction points and, and maybe we'll circle back to the CALMS model as well, which I quite like for thinking about DevOps. But I think the answer is also no. But again, that comes back to my thought processes around what DevOps is, which is fundamentally, it's about a bunch of people that might have different expertise working together to deliver software. So it is mostly about people working better together, having more unified purpose, pulling in the same direction. And so that's more about how human beings work together and the culture in which that happens. And for me, it feels that at least our current understanding of what we can do with AI it doesn't seem to give us many kind of places where that can help massively in terms of changing it forever anyway. I mean, incremental improvements around the edges, maybe. Taking the, like another model, I think, of defining DevOps, which I think I found useful as well, is the CALMS model, which is the yeah. kind of culture, automation, lean, measurement, and sharing stuff, right? And if you think about all those aspects, where do we think AI could have a play? Yeah. Culture? No. Automation? It gets dicey, you know, having a non-deterministic, like, LLM do automation when when you do automation what do you want you want completely reproducible recreatable auditable change process around how automation is done so maybe yeah auto you know maybe triggering a script which is defined in terms of that declarative deterministic style so i think automation there's not much play there at the moment and yeah so we're then into the lean well lean's really about process optimization so potentially but no, that's not where any of the energy is being focused on at the moment. So then we're into measurement and you're like, well, then we're maybe into that murky world uh, where these tools are going to magically tell us when there's an anomaly. And we've been promised that for like at least 20 years. I don't know. Do you, I mean, do you think these uh, are like an, a smart AI agent is going to spot that you've got a problem in production and tell you what's happening and why? Do you think that's going to happen? You've led me up for the straight back, so. So, so no, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen generically. I think there are cases 
where you can do some stuff that that can kind of help that. I, I wrote some software for one of the trading firms that I worked in that helped us spot anomalies. And that that wasn't AI. That was just rule, you know, some code with some rules in it that we could kind of parameterize and pick and manipulate and assign to different categories and things that would just give us an alert if something looks suspicious and then kind of trigger human intervention to, to, to make a judgment. I can see doing that kind of thing and using AI to discover some of those patterns. But again, as you're saying, that's really just around the margins of removing a bit of the drudgery. Yeah. And that's no bad thing. No, it's a good thing. I mean, actually, you know, if they can help around that, I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that would be useful. But I think the the idea that it, I mean, the problem, of course, is, is that if you look through the lens of maybe how DevOps has, has been talked about a lot, it often, you know, vendors want to talk about DevOps in terms of the tool you can buy. Yeah. And so from their point of view, well, all their tools now have AI in it because they have to have AI in it because all their VCs say you have to have AI in your tools, right? So from their view, but it's great, but DevOps was, I think, was always about that culture. It was always about that friction. And so I can see it helping with some friction points here and there. I actually think of that CALMS model, like the yeah. place where I could imagine these tools getting smarter around, like thinking about like traffic patterns, for example, or saying, yeah. you know, tuning it for your system and starting to pop, pop patterns in your system. It's not going to be turnkey. I, but it, it's, I think there's something else that seems to be happening, which is that people seem to be using the use of AI as a reason to have fewer conversations. Yes. I, I can talk to my AI coding agent to have a conversation around my code. And it's like, or you could speak to your colleagues. Yeah. But like, I, I, so the, the worry I have is in some ways it might cause us to regress yeah. in terms of the... The cultural bit. Yeah. That's my, and then the sharing bit of comms, right? Which is about yeah, yeah. sharing the feedback cycles. Right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I, I don't know. I, I worry a little bit about that. Absolutely. I think those are two areas where I can't see AI having any obvious significant benefit in the future. The automation, you can imagine using it as a tool to help build automation. But I agree. I, I think your point about in this problem domain specifically of building deployment pipelines and all of that stuff absolutely want determinism you want to be able to push a button and get exactly the same result that you had last time and ais are not good at that that's not what they're useful for so we might be able to use them to you know once again as kind of you know smart assistants to help us write better code or to know what the api to circle ci or azure devops or whatever else it is you know how that works we can use it for those sorts of things great but they're not going to auto magically build a deployment pipeline for us no uh, like by having an mcp server that talks to you know your terraform stuff for you so you can like say i want you to spin up i need a copy of our performance test environment can you do that for me it would know how to access terraform spin that up on aws say here it is absolutely fine great love it awesome weirdly although i was kind of a bit down on the whole you know uh, in the observability space oh it's gonna stop spotting traffic patterns and anomalies for us yeah of anything in that kind of calms model around devops it is the one area we think i actually kind of hope it would but but always with these things it's like they're not going to get good enough quickly enough to remove the need for human beings to be in the loop at three, you know, to be on the call at 3 a.m. But I could see using, like, I could see things like saying, I've got a problem in production. I'm in there, you know, I'm, I'm in my honeycomb dashboards trying to see this. So we've had an error. I'm seeing a spike. I'm seeing an error rate spike. And like, I could see dragging like this error rate spike and saying, have we seen patterns like this before? Yes. Like, have we seen an increase like this before? And then it coming back and say, we get this, this spike happens every week on a Thursday and you're thinking, oh, it's a Thursday right now, but we didn't have those errors in the past. It's probably not related. So I could imagine something in that troubleshooting space like there yeah. that could kind of help me a little bit, but we're not there yet. No, the complexity with that is that it's always going to be so contextual and how much data are we going to have to train the things to recognize those patterns? I was once the tech lead on a large project that you and I both worked on when at ThoughtWorks. And I spent an awful lot of my time in those days looking at logs to see how the system was going in production to understand what was going on. And I started being able to see patterns in the logs as they were whizzing past on the screen because I was looking at them just by the shape of the text on the screen. 
And so I started thinking about writing some code to kind of, you know, <laughs> replace the characters with, with dots so I could see the pattern and recognize the pattern and stuff like that. But th there's a lot of work in, the, in trying to do those kinds of things, even in as trivial way as that. And to be able to kind of gather that data, identify the patterns and so on. I know AI is great at dealing with lots of data, but I'm not, I'm not quite so sure that we have enough of those sort of repeatable cases very often with, with, with software. Unless your software is a basket case, I suppose. Maybe you do. Well, well, software I write tends to be a basket case. But what I can imagine, though, I mean, so I think, you know, these, sort of, if you think about like a smarter AI agent to help around production troubleshooting, like narrowly, right? When you were looking at those logs, you have this huge amount of context and understanding about what's happening at that particular client. So I could imagine a, like, getting a vendor solution where they give you an agent that you, as the smart human operator, then help tune and train. Yeah. Right. It's almost like redoing a whole training cycle, but it would be on your kind of a slightly, you know, a more bespoke agent for that purpose. Um, and it would mind asking you questions. Is this normal? And you're like, well, yes, this is normal. No, it's not. Or, and as you read, I think the observability tool vendors are in a pretty good place for this because they are if you're using your hotel data, it's all coming to that location. Yeah. They can at least bootstrap off that and it is now in a structured form, logs aside, but the rest of it is kind of structured. And I think I think there's something there, but I do think it's going to be so... I think it is going to need tuning and training for specific cases, which speaks to a degree of sophistication that the vast majority of people today do not have. Yeah. Right. I, I think the people that already are very, very sophisticated are already doing kind of interesting stuff around this space. And, and like, you know, I mean, we know the big cloud vendors have done stuff around formal specifications for looking at patterns yes. in production already, right? So, but I don't think it's going to be available to all of us for a long time. No, no, I agree. And, and as you say, even then, it's not going to be off, off the shelf. It's going to be something that we're going to have to train in our specific context. And that's not going to be simple. That's not going to be an easy process, I can't imagine. I mean, coming back to that sort of discussion around like DevOps being about culture and removing friction points, do you, I mean, that, I think you and I are kind of on the same page about that. When you, when you speak to people, I know you were at a conference last week, when you speak to people, do you still feel that people understand what DevOps is even? No, I don't. I, I, I think it's just become a word that means operations largely to most people, as far as I can tell. I, I think its meanings lost. I haven't heard anybody apart from the cognoscenti talk about calms for a long time, for example, which, which, which is one of my preferred definitions as well. So, so if you hadn't mentioned it, I would have, because I, I think that's a good description of what it is that we're talking about and, and useful, but, but very much oriented towards this, this kind of culture, you know, a lot of the other stuffs are really there to support the culture. So Automation maybe is a bit out, but but lean thinking is part of the culture of efficiency and pruning down so we minimise the amount of work and all of those things. So so absolutely, I think think these things are important, and I, I think I think it's one of those ideas that has it hasn't aged terribly well. It's 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 kind of got a bit devalued, although it's pervasive and it's everywhere. Yeah, I think you had a lot of DevOps washing that happened, like you had yeah. tools that were around before that hadn't really ever been built with a DevOps working culture in mind, but there was suddenly slap like new labels on top of it. Like this is yeah. your DevOps tool, your DevOps tool chain, Azure DevOps. Yeah. Right. Let's be clear. Ha meeting people who say, I'm a DevOps yeah. at so-and-so. It's like, oh, 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 I'm an agile. Right. It's like, it's a mean, like I would always meet those people and often well intentioned, but they'd been given a title. Yes. Which is why I now see people being given the title of site reliability engineer, but without really knowing what that means either. And again, yeah. it's just sysadmins are opt with a new title and, and maybe a pay bump. Right. But that's one of those slightly, slightly interesting, amusing progressions of of titles so 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 you got devops site reliability engineer platform engineer and kind of yes all slightly meaningless <laughs> well they are i think in a corporate context they often are because those roles yeah. are entirely fungible and yet if you go to the organization like if you look at google where those terms were at least you know at least the site reliability engineer term yeah. originated you would never confuse any of the people in the platform space with the SREs, they were very different and they yeah. worked together. I mean, I kind of worked on the tool side there, right? Yeah. But the SREs are very different people. And the reality is in that space, the vast majority of organizations probably can't justify 
by having that many full-time SREs. And, they, and those people tend not to have the right skills anyway. And it's a very niche thing. Yeah. But it's, and I, you know, I understand that, you know, partly it's about companies wanting to be seen to be doing the more advanced, fashionable thing. And sometimes it's about individuals. Yeah, I think it's about individuals wanting to say, oh, I'm doing something new as well. And um, Absolutely. But, but also, I think it's a bit about companies making profit off the back of these ideas want one latest idea as kind of you know to, to keep the hype cycle going and so the people that kind of ran out and making money off calling things devops started making money after calling things sre and started making money out calling things about platform engineering so th that pollutes the waters these things are let's be just be clear what both of us mean i think these things are distinct and have distinct value and are good ideas but they're not replacements for each other. Oh uh, yeah, it's interesting. It was I mean, mentioned about like people chasing after the buck. It was I was at an API conference last week in India, which was an excellent conference. But it was really interesting meeting a couple of people who are like vendors in the API gateway space, and they are so happy with AI mm -hmm. because so many of their products were like, "Oh, we're going to help you with the API economy," which never really materialized, right? And so now they had nothing to justify their valuations on. Now it's like yeah. oh, MCP servers. I mean, I, like MCP was almost a swear word at this conference around the people that knew what was going on. So it's like, and, and look, we shouldn't, you know, it kind of happens. And yeah. if you are a vendor, you think your product is great and that's why you want to go out and sell it because you think your, your product's great. Yeah. But I think kind of it's unfortunate when you get some vendors, I think, which can push their product without diluting the message. And others where they don't they don't really care about diluting the message, which I, I that that's the point where I start getting kind of frustrated with the whole piece. Yeah, I I I think we're about at time, so we should try and find a summary. Okay, to summarise, is AI going to change DevOps for now forever? No, and I'm a no, but we both think it might help around the edges a bit. Is yeah. that kind of fair? I think I, I think that's fair, and and I confess I found this big question slightly trickier to answer than most of the rest because you can place so much interpretation on what these words mean in in the context and that's why we spent such a lot of time talking about what devops was i suppose but uh, no i i think i think your summary is good uh, it, it's not going to change devops forever because fundamentally this is about culture and collaboration and how we interact with each other with each other and as long as human beings and even if it's not human beings if the machines are doing this thing they'll be collaborating and you know thinking about these things collectively as well perhaps yeah that's a long way off that's a long way off <laughs> i did like you bring it back to definition of continuous delivery which that definition comes is, is the of the one of the principles of the manifesto and i think that's a really great one and that calms model and i think i was struggling because obviously my knee-jerk reaction was no but i wanted to articulate it so that calms yeah. model helped so yes for those of you at home it's ca LMS, calm. Yes. This is the model you should look at. And please don't use your LLM to automate your infrastructure as well. Yeah. That's just a, you know. Or your testing. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> that does sound like a one big question for next time, doesn't it? It does. Great. Thank you very much. And if you enjoyed the episode, don't remember to subscribe and hit like. And tell us what you think about whether DevOps is going to change in the comments. Thank you. And if you've got a one big question for us, maybe put it in the comments for us as well. Absolutely. We'll look forward to those. See you soon. See you soon.